everybody. Welcome back to today's Bible study. I'm your speaker, JT O'Malley 9681. This time we'll be doing a Bible study, and it'll be the main scripture will be in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 16, and it's about being stewards for the future. And so go ahead and pause this video at your leisure and give yourselves a word of prayer before we get started. All right, the title is Stewarding for the Future, and we'll start in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verse 1 through 14. Keep in mind, I'll be using some Hebrew words and names, and I will explain things to the best of my ability to hopefully not confuse anybody. And he, that's Jesus, Yahshua, said unto his disciples there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods and he called him and said unto him how is it that I hear of these things about you I need you to give an account of your stewardship because you may no longer be my steward so then the steward said to himself what shall I do my Lord is going to take away my stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. I am resolved what, what to do. I am put out of stewardship. They may receive me unto their houses. So he called every one of the debtors to his Lord and said unto them, to the first, How much do you owe? He said, One hundred measures of oil. He said unto him, Well, go ahead and write down fifty and that will be it. That's pretty much what he's saying. I'm paraphrasing here. Then he said to another, What do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, All right, well, write this unto me for eighty. And so when the Lord had commanded the unjust steward, for he had done wisely, and I will be explaining that part in a moment, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful to the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or else he will hold to one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard of these things and they derided him. And this was still back in the time where the Pharisees were following Yahshua and his disciples around. And even they knew and understood these things, but yet they acted like they didn't want nothing to do with it. Especially when they knew that they were wrong with what they were doing. Now, this part where, because he had done wisely in verse 8... Yahshua is not saying that what the unjust steward did was a good thing, because it wasn't, it was dishonest. But what Yahshua, Jesus, is trying to say is that this guy thought ahead on how he could have preparations made for the future if what he's doing right now in life fails. And the Pharisees were not doing that. So one thing Jesus is saying is that this guy was actually a lot smarter than the Pharisees when it comes to being dishonest. The Pharisees were even worse because they're supposed to be representing Elohim and they were for sure that they were. Of course, they definitely were not. At least the Pharisees that were dishonest. Now, what Yahshua was trying to make the connection of is things done for the future. 
and the future of the kingdom. Your place in, in having eternal life. And Yahshua is not saying that we need to be dishonest to keep these things up. He wants us to do things the honest way. And we shouldn't have such, try to do such great uh, for preparations for the future with finances because that can get us into trouble. And so Yahshua, Jesus, gives talents to us who follow him to glorify the kingdom. We will need to be faithful and not lack the work set before us. That's what this unjust steward did. He was lacking and not being faithful with what was set before him. The ways of the world, this world that we live in right now, will cause you to foolishly give up anything for even a short time of publicity. And that's what this uh, dishonest uh, steward manager was doing. And what his master was saying to him is that, you know, what you did was pretty shrewd. He wasn't telling him that he liked what he did. He was telling him, you know, that's very shrewd because you only did it for your own pride and you refused to be humble. You had, given, you had given me some, or at least most, of what you were supposed to take care of. And now what you've done is if I end up throwing you out, now you may have a place that you can actually go to. That's pretty dishonest. Now whether if the steward got kicked out of the stewardship or not, I don't know. We don't know that. It's because this is a parable, so... We don't know if this actually took place or not. It's a story to give people insight. That's what it's. A, that's what parables are for. Now, if this guy, if the steward, took the oil and the wheat, which are which were considered finances with the way that they were measured within business, that's finances. If he would have taken them for himself, then he could have been thrown in jail for that, because that's straight stealing. So he wasn't stealing. But he wasn't being fully honest with what was set before him. Instead of going out and getting everything, even though he may still get kicked out of the stewardship, he decided to be unwise and give discounts just so he can bring it, bring half to most, at least, of everything in. So hopefully his master will keep him. And that's being dishonest because he was supposed to have everything in full. And so he did that for publicity to try and back himself up on. You will see a lot of musicians, athletes, other celebrity statuses, where those people, a lot of them are doing the same principles. And so let's go to the first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 9, verse 25. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And so, we who are true to Yahshua, Jesus, need to do all we do for the kingdom and not for temporarily worldly things. Be faithful with a little bit first, so you will be faithful with more in the future because if you're going to try and not be faithful now with even a little bit and you actually want to do something bigger and be faithful in that big thing later in the future how are you going to do that if you can't do it with just a little bit now now a letter to the church in Ephesus we're going chapter 5 verse 15 and 16 see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We all need to make certain that we account each day because we will be face to face with Elohim, God, giving an account. Yeah, there may be days that there really isn't much of anything, but there are, there is always something. So we need to be sure that we do something. Even if it's just praying, we need to do something and have a keep an account because so many of these days are so evil. In the days that are in front of us are evil. Now, the first letter 
to the from the disciple Peter, you know, Simon Peter, in chapter 4, verse 10. Every man has received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. So we need to be good ministers with the gifts Elohim, God, gives us. We shall use them for others, for Elohim's God's glory. The first letter to the church of Corinth, and again, in chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Mashiach and stewards of the mysteries of Yahuwah. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or the man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet I am not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Adon. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Adon comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of Yahuwah. Not just Elohim, but for the most of all, Yahuwah, the Father. And so, if you are not faithful at any measure with what Elohim, God, gave you to use, how can you expect to keep the treasures that Elohim, God, longs to give you during your time on earth and in heaven? We must not love this world's currency. All who love the currency of this world will mock the treasures of the kingdom. Be mindful of what Elohim, God, will allow our worldly possessions to be wasted. And see, our, our earthly, worldly possessions are temporary. I mean, if we lose them, they can be replaced. But it's not something that we need to treasure. And it's not that we need to make sure we have the most treasures of, ever, of anybody else in the kingdom. No, that's not so much of the point. The point is, if we want true treasures, they need to be within the kingdom waiting for us. And so we need to allow Elohim to work through us in order for treasures to be stored. And the more that we allow Elohim to work through us, the more treasures will be stored. But if we're going to be uh, keeping more track on our worldly possessions and being dishonest and stuff like that, then God will will definitely uh, be talking to us by allowing our worldly possessions to be lost. And we will not have as many treasures as we could have in our eternal kingdom. And so, let's go to another passage still in the first letter to the church of Corinth. Verse, chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do you. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him a, in store, as Elohim has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And this is the Apostle Paul who wrote this letter. And so what he is saying is to give an offering to Elohim, God. He's not saying tithing, he's saying an offering. Because there is nowhere in the New Testament that says that we must tithe. That the church must tithe. There is nothing that says that in the New Testament. The renewed covenant, not the new covenant, the renewed covenant. Now, if you feel that you want to give a tithe, 10%, that is your decision. But it is good to give any kind of an offering, no matter how small or large it is. And then the last one, the last passage that is in the second letter to the church of Corinth that the Apostle Paul wrote. Chapter 9, verse 5 through 9. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty. 
whereof you had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he proposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for Elohim loves a cheerful giver. And Elohim is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He has despaired abroad, He has given to the poor, His righteousness remains for ever. And what this is saying is that to give generously, willingly, and joyfully in faith. You should never do it as a grudge or, man, I don't know how, it, how this is going to go for me through the rest, but this is what I'm going to do. I hope that it, this doesn't drop me down in other things of bills and rent and stuff like that. We should never think like that. It's like I said earlier from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, from when I said to be faithful with a little bit first so that you will be faithful with more in the future. You won't even be able to even allow yourself to even do that if you're not going to do it generously, willingly, and joyfully in faith because you don't have any faith or you are very, very lacking in faith. If you can only give a little bit, then do that. Even if it's everything that you have left to your name, and it's only a very little bit. Just like that one woman who gave, I forget how much it was. It was very, very little in comparison to so many others. But she gave it out of good faith. And Jesus spoke up and told everyone that she gave the most out of everyone because it was everything to her name. And she had that much faith in God to give it to God, to Elohim, that God will do what God is going to do with it, and that God will take care of her. And that is how we need to be here. That's going to be it for this one, folks. I hope all of you who have viewed this have learned something from this. Please keep prayers for the people in Afghanistan that are being killed and being taken into sex trafficking in Afghanistan by the Taliban. Because we do have a lot of brothers and sisters out there who are being martyred right now. Anybody has any questions or prayer requests, leave them in the comments section. Follow me on social media. I'll have links in the video description. Abba willing. I will have another Bible study up. I don't know when and I don't know what it's going to be. We'll just have to find out of what Elohim wants me to do. Till then, stay safe. Shalom, my friends. And I bear this Bible study in the name of thy son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.